All right, so we've already learned about lists in Python, which is one way you can organize like smaller pieces of data together, right? So I can have some list called x, let's say, x equals 1, 2, cat, and true. I don't know. Now x is this list, and I can access elements in it. Um, x of 3 should actually be dog, so now x is this. I can do something to these, this list called an append, which is x.append, and that's a uh, Four. And now we can see what happened was a, another value was appended to the end of the list. Um, we can also do something known as x, like we can pop. And what did pop do right here? Whenever I typed x.pop, the number 4 came out. If we look at x now, it's actually shorter. And this is very, very interesting. So what pop can do is it actually allows us to get rid of an element. And not only just like, you know, get rid of it. I mean, you can actually assign it to something. So I could have done y equals x dot pop of, you know, that. So then y is now dog. x is now just 3 long. If we were to do z equals x dot pop, z is cat, x is now shorter. You can also pop from the front of the list as well. So if we have a list, um, let's make a quick one. So let's have r equals list range 5. r is that list, which we've seen before. Just like before, where we can do r dot pop of this. So now r is shorter. We can actually also specify a number we want to pop. So we could have done r dot pop, which is the same exact thing as r.pop with no number specified, or we can do r.pop of zero. And what that does is it actually popped, it removed the first element, or the zeroth element of the list. This is a super useful thing to have. Now sometimes in Python, lists just don't cut it, okay? Like a list is a really nice way to have a ordered struct, like structuring of data, right? So if you have g equals, I don't know, 1, 13, 98, 99, 78, or something. Maybe these are grades. I don't know. G, great. This is fine. And maybe the, the reason they're in this order is because this is the order they were experienced during the semester or something. But a lot of times in life, data doesn't necessarily have a order associated with it. Or you want to be able to access it from a different perspective. Like you you don't want to have to remember like we can you could always just arbitrarily order things in a list, right? So maybe it's some pile of data about like I don't know, economic recovery rates of countries or something. I have no idea. And you could just, you know, arbitrarily assign them in alphabetical order or something and you but you'd always have to remember that. What would be much nicer would be if you could actually somehow like link them to a keyword that you would know. And you can do this in Python and most programming languages with something known as a dictionary. In a lot of languages, it's not known as a dictionary, but the idea or the structure there is the same. So what is a dictionary? In Python, just like with a list where you create it with the square brackets, a dictionary is actually created with curly braces. And we can come up with a dictionary. And, and the idea behind a dictionary are uh, key... The idea behind a dictionary are key entry pairs. And what that means is you have some sort of keyword and it is mapped to an entry and then another keyword and it is mapped to an entry and another keyword and it is mapped to an entry and so the benefit of dictionaries let's actually write one just to get the syntax over with and actually let's um, do it in a file so let's come up with a dictionary we're gonna call it grades alright it's gonna be a little bit better than the other one alright and we oh, we start making a dictionary by with a cur opening curly brace, and let's do test one colon, and then let's do the grade for test one. Let's do 97. Okay, then let's do test two, and then the grade for that one would be 96. And then maybe you didn't do well on the test three, and then you got like a 38. I don't know. Test three, 38, and then test four would be 88. Okay. If we were to run this, then Okay, we have now this dictionary, grades. And grades, so what does it look like? It's a curly, whenever you just print it out, it'd be a curly brace, and then each one of the keys as they're known, and the keys are the first part, 
and then the entry is the value associated with that key. And we can look things up in grades by doing grades square brace a key which we're interested in. Let's look up test four and it'll actually return back the value associated with it. Now notice whenever I type out grade, if I were to print grades, it prints, oh, test three, test two, test four, test one. That doesn't make sense because whenever we wrote it, it was test one, test two, test three, test four. Dictionaries don't have an order associated with them. Okay, they're just a collection of data floating around and all they are is linked, linking the key to the entry and that's it. And that's an important thing to remember. So you can't iterate through a dictionary in a reliable manner like you can a list. A list is designed to be a structured data type, I mean a ordered data type, excuse me, while the dictionary is an unordered data type. But a dictionary has this benefit where you don't have, like a lot of times in life you don't need to have an order to your data, you just need to have them exist. And what it allows you to do is be, have things be able to be looked up, right? So test one now, we can just type in test one and get the grade. or any sort of arbitrary key entry pair and it's super useful and we'll be using it quite a bit in this class.